By now we should have a pretty good understanding of the basics of Mechanim and how to use it to move things around on the screen. So let's move on to something a little more interesting, a little more advanced. And let's take a look at animation events. And we're going to be taking a look at how to use them with the animation tool. So if we go ahead and take a look at this scene, I've gone ahead and set up this little uh, dude here. We'll call him Walter because every character needs a name, right? And Walter can move forward and backwards. He has this like little twirly jump. And he can also shoot, which is this key. So not too bad. We got a good start here on Walter. But let's go ahead and actually change it a bit so that uh, when we do our little twirly jump here, let's actually go ahead and shoot four shots out. And let's go take a look at the animations and how we have this set up. So I'm going to stop it. We'll click on Walter. Or in the case of this scene, I call him uh, Cube Dude. Uh, if we take a look here, he has a gun. And I've gone ahead and put an empty game object at the end of the gun for the launch point. This is where I want the projectiles to be fired from. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the animator or mechanism, the way I have this set up. And I have a blend tree set up for the movement. We've looked at this several times already. I've just made a simple move script that just moves them forward. And of course, when you get a negative value, if we just go ahead and click this, it will move them backwards. And of course, when it's at zero, he just idles. And then I have this any state transforming to the 360 jump. And that goes off when the 360 toggle is clicked. So a very simple state machine set up here. Let's take a look at the animations. We'll start off with idle. Idle, like all my other idle animations, is usually just one frame and does nothing. Of course, you might want maybe a little bob or sway or whatever, whatever you want. It's my idle animation. There's nothing going on. Uh, the move animation, like I said, it's, uh, it moves in one direction. In this case, 10 units on Z, because Z is always forward. And I have it set for one second. And if we look at Jump 360, Jump 360, a little more complex, not that bad. We do have the position and rotation being managed here. And if we take a look at the position uh, from frame 0 to frame well, halfway through a second, uh, he jumps up to 0.5 in the air. And then on the very last frame, he just comes back down. 1.5 is what's needed for this cube to be on the ground. And if we go ahead and actually take a look at the rotation as well, I've just started off the rotation being at 0, 0, 0. And then at the very last frame, I've gone ahead and set the Y to 360. So he does a full revolution throughout the whole thing. So let's go ahead and actually set up an animation event. An animation events are pretty simple. Let's go ahead, we'll start off the one when he's at the very top here. See this little bar here between the, the timeline and the keyframe bar? If you right click in here, you can add an animation event. Pretty simple. And it's gonna ask you for a function. And I'm gonna take fire projectile. And if we go ahead and take a look, uh, it's grabbing it off of this script here. And we'll quickly open up this script here. Uh, nothing special at the top. I'm just getting a reference to my animator, my transform, but where I want to launch the projectile from and the actual prefab of the projectile itself. In the awake, I just assign it. In the update, uh, I have my guy move according to what key I'm pressing. Then of course I have the fire key. So when I press the one key, he shoots. And of course, when I press the space bar, he does a little 360 jump. Well, this is the method I want to call here. It's fire projectile. And this is what I'm going to call from the animation itself. So with that done, let's go at 0.15. Let's close this down. I'm going to right click again, add another one. And I'm going to call the same function. Then at 0.45, we'll add another one. You guessed it. And when he lands, we'll go ahead, we'll call one more. There we go. So that's it. You know you have these set up because of the little white boxes here. And when you hover over them, you see them. And if for some reason they're closed and you want to edit it later on, you can just click on it. Double click, I should say. And it'll open up. And of course, if I did have other methods, public methods, I could grab those as well. And we'll come in. We'll just take a look at this one here. And I now have foo or... Fire projectile. I'm going to keep fire projectile, obviously. So let's go ahead and we'll shut this part down. If we hit play, we watch as it plays through. 
It's not doing anything, and it won't actually do anything until you're actually playing your game. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, make sure record is off. I'm gonna hit the play button, and now when I hit the space bar, he jumps up, shoots four projectiles. Uh, the projectiles themselves just last two seconds and kill themselves. So there we go. Now, of course, we could uh, instantiate some sort of sound when he shoots as well. Maybe there's a particle effect, maybe some smoke coming out of the end of the barrel, a muzzle flash, whatever it is you want. You can actually go ahead and time that in the actual animation of when you want it to go off. So maybe right before he actually goes and fires all these shots off, maybe you want him to have some sort of battle cry where he's all like, Wah! and maybe you want that to start right about here. Of course, this is where you could go ahead, maybe my foo method does that. And now when it plays at point, zero five he'll start yelling then he'll do his little shots and i find this to be a really great way to keep everything in sync with the animation so that your sounds are never out of sync or maybe when you're like you know firing your gun you might have a, maybe a complex animation on your gun where the guy's running and the gun's kind of like at chest level but when you hit the trigger button he lifts it up to his chest or rather his shoulder looks down the scope and then shoots you know, so obviously there you don't want the, the the fire effect to go off right away you want to wait till he's actually you know, in position on the gun and fires. And again, you'll want to have like that muzzle flash, particle effects, whatever it is you want to add is there as well. This is probably the easiest and probably the best way to actually do it. Anyway, that's it for this video. And well, like always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.